verses 17 through 18. <clears throat> a man burdened with bloodshed will flee into a pit. Let no one help him. Whoever walks blamelessly will be saved, but he who is perverse in his ways will suddenly fall. This man that committed murder goes on the run, and his conscience is tormented by his wicked sin. A good way to translate this verse is don't harbor a fugitive. Today that would be a felony. I'm thinking today of the former Los Angeles police officer. If anybody were to harbor him as a fugitive, I guarantee the justice system would really clamp down on them. But see, this applies to any sin, any sinner. It, it, it's not kind when we're helping another person in their sin. We're actually making things worse for them. Sinners will usually be more likely to turn from God when they hit rock bottom. That's usually when God will save them when they've hit rock bottom. And oftentimes Christians try to help other people uh, uh, through in their sins rather than uh, allow them to fall down to the bottom so that the Lord will finally bring them to repentance. We don't want to help people cover up their sins and put bandages on their sins. A sinner who has a guilty conscience will either be driven to repentance or will flee from his own pit or trap of death. Solomon is also reminding us that a man who flees from a murder is running from his own death sentence because they would be brought to death swiftly back in those days. Therefore, he's saying no one should try to stop his execution. Interesting that today the Catholic Church frequently protests the death penalty. Fact is, the death penalty is biblical. You cannot be against something that's biblical, nor can you support something that is unbiblical. It's an oxymoron. It's sin. Back in 1998, when convicted killer Carla Faye Tucker lived her last months on life, many pleaded for then-Governor George W. Bush to give her a stay of execution. Even famous, popular, power, powerful people like the Pope, conservatives like TV evangelist Pat Robinson, and, and even the Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, were pleading with Governor Bush to give her a stay. Why? Well, perhaps because she was a female, she was attractive, and she claimed to have been, have been, uh, been born again while she was in prison. I believe that uh, with the plea of equal rights comes equal responsibility. So if we're going to give equal rights, we ought to execute and demonstrate and administer equal responsibility and equal consequences as well. Therefore, my ministry, way back then, uh, wrote, Governor George Bush a letter informing him of the many false jailhouse conversions and, and that if, if Carla Faye Tucker truly was saved, she would have spent an eternity with the Lord anyways. And then, of course, on February 3rd, 1998, she was executed by lethal injection. In case you're wondering what her last meal was, it was a banana, a peach, and a garden salad with ranch dressing. You say, why would I mention her last rights, her last meal rights in this message. Well, fact is, if Carla truly came to Christ, if Carla truly came to Christ, she will enjoy a much better meal than that. She will actually be seated down with all of us at the table of the marriage supper of the Lamb. We will, have, we will be at that feast with her if she truly is saved, and she will have a very great supper then. See, governors must be very, very careful. Matter of fact, Scripture says in Revelation 19:9, Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. It's something that we all have to look forward to. It's a wonderful dinner. I can't wait. And if Carla was saved, well, she's my sister in Christ. Governors got to be very careful giving stays of execution or clemency. Back uh, years ago, when Mike Huckabee was the governor of Arkansas, he granted clemency to a murderer by the name of Maurice Clemens. After Huckabee released Clemens, he walked into a coffee shop. Clemens walked into a coffee shop in the state of Washington, and he assassinated four police officers that were eating and having a briefing at a table. Shot all four of them. I think I believe all three three of them were shot in the head, and the other one was shot in the chest. Clemens was a Muslim. The nation of Islam within America awarded Clemens with their crowned Bow Martyr Award. The Bow, B-O-W, stands for black and white. They hate whites, they hate Christians, and they hate Jews. 
See, the blood of those four cops is on Mike Huckabee's hands. Mike Huckabee is not the conservative that many are led to believe. He's actually a social liberal. Back to the text. <clears throat> 